Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're new here, I'm Elton, a 50 something year old, undertaking a long term photography project in my 1996 Hima. So you can expect to see travel photography, photography and video from historical sites that I visit, landscape and nature photography, wildlife and animal photography from around my travels, and also video tutorials, camera gear reviews, um, and hints and tips of van life and long-term travel. So please do join me and hit that subscribe button. Hey everyone. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to show you it's been a while since I posted, several months in fact, but I thought uh, it's time to make a post because once again I'm not doing what I said I would do when I started this channel which was to bring you the realities of bad life, the ups and the downs. Um, and I suppose like most people, if you're having a bit of a downer, um, you know, you're not up for much and certainly not for sitting in front of a camera. Um, but if I don't do that, I'm not really bringing you the realities of van life. So <clears throat> August marked three years that I've been on this photography project now, traveling around. And uh, this the last year certainly was the most challenging. Um, as you know from previous videos, the winter was just harsh it started raining last august and stopped raining in about may um we've had a wet miserable summer i believe i heard it's the mildest summer on record in the uk so a really crappy winter followed by a not so great summer and we're now in october heading into the fourth winter on the road um so yeah, it's it, the last year has definitely definitely been the worst of the three so far. Um, besides the weather issues, there's there's a lot of frustration. Um, I worked on two campsites this year. One in a new forest, um, where I simply didn't get on with the management at all. They have no experience of running campsites. They have no idea of marketing a, any business, let alone a, a tourism and a camping business. Um, within two weeks of being there, I sent their marketing director a whole bunch of ideas and, that I had to improve the business to get more people on site because the site where I was working was desolate. Besides the, um, the seasonal people, there was just no one on those sites. Yeah, over the bank holiday weekends and things that tended to fill up, it was not never fully booked. Um, and this is a site that I've stayed on previously. And I know that the previous people who ran these sites, the campsite was full when I was there. Um, and certainly even over the winter or the off peak seasons, um, those sites were pretty busy. Funny enough, at the time when I was working there, the marketing director played down my ideas. However, since leaving, I see that they've implemented every single one of them. So, you know, go figure. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just couldn't, I couldn't be, I couldn't work for a company who treats their staff like crap, basically. You know, as I say, I was at good intentions. The ideas that I sent through to them were valid ideas, which, as I say, they've now implemented. Um, and yet at the time, they almost saw me as someone who was trying to overstep the mark, as it were. You know, I was a mere warden. I shouldn't be making such suggestions. They forget my background as a business analyst and someone who's worked with big corporates and you know, going in and understanding the business pain points and then coming up with solutions to address those issues. It's what, it's what I've done for decades. Um, so yeah, I left because of the pedantry, you know, they were just looking for reasons to have a moan at their staff, really ridiculous things. And I just couldn't deal with it. So I left there. Um, I then within a week or two weeks, I 
saw another job come up with a campsite which was a family run campsite I've never worked on a family run campsite before so I thought well you know being family run hopefully it's going to be a better experience sadly that wasn't the case either and I think I was there for about four or five weeks um, before the owner and I decided you know mutually agreed it was time it just wasn't working out um, yeah, there was two wardens, myself and another warden, and it was a 20-hour shift a week, um, which initially I thought would be great because I could go and do my other bits and bobs in the, you know, the rest of the week. Um, however, the hours weren't really split. I, I was working, working five hours a day for four days um, and then three days off, and I was typically picking up a lot of work that, the other warden wasn't doing um, and pointing out issues with, with the sites and things like that so we just agreed that it wasn't working out and you know I was good uh, I left um, so I went back to doing my thing which is website design search engine optimization consultancy social media management and pet sitting and I've kind of come to the conclusion that that's what I've got to focus on. I've got to focus on being self-sufficient financially where I don't need to be on a campsite. And I think that's part of the reason why I just won't take any crap when I'm working on a campsite because it's summer. I'm sacrificing summer to be at the campsite and to work for minimum wage. And I'm just not prepared to take any bollocks when I am sacrificing my summer and it's just minimum wage pay. You know, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't apply for or accept those jobs if the money was an issue. Um, so the money isn't the issue. It, it's the nonsense that comes with the money, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> so that is going to be my focus now is to because I really do not want to spend another summer working on a campsite, but I do at the same time need an income. And this is where it becomes challenging, um, you know, living full time in a caravan, motorhome, whatever it may be, is that whilst it's cheaper than being a homeowner, it's not free. You know, even if you do never pay for a campsite or pay for parking or whatever, if you only ever manage to find free parking, you've still got the other expenses, you've still got the fuel, which depending on how often you're driving around could be your biggest expense. And in the UK, fuel is not cheap. It's not what it is in the US, etc. where again, a lot of UK people who watch the van life movement follow US people, which is a very distorted view of reality because what's possible in the US and the prices in the US is not comparable to the prices here in the UK. Um, so the, you know, if you are considering van life, make sure you're following people in your country rather than abroad. You know, yes, if you're interested in going to Spain, you know, follow people who've been to Spain and things like that. But to understand what van life is like in the UK, there is no point following someone traveling around the US. Um, Obviously there's food, etc. So there are still bills. Insurance is another one. And in the UK at the moment, insurance is just ridiculous. Um, my insurance is up for renewal soon and I am breaking it completely because I think my renewal came in and just under a thousand pounds for next year. Um, so yeah, which is horrendous, you know? And um, if you're full-time employed, not a big deal, is it? Um, but yeah, when you kind of hustling for a living, um, you need to try and keep your cost out as much as possible. And I think that's why this last year has been such a, so challenging on me is that, um, it does feel like it's a constant hustle to earn some money and my bank account just never seems to go into the plus, you know, it's, it's not in the negative, it's just hovering around 
you know, it's just kind of maintaining itself. I'm earning enough and then I spend it and then I earn a bit more and then I spend it. And it's just not getting into where I'm saving money at this point. I'm just maintaining what I have, um, which is again, not ideal. Um, you know, so I do need in this next, in these next few months slash this next year, I need to become self-sufficient income wise. So whether that's, obviously I'm going to continue doing my website design and bits and bobs, but I need to find other avenues of a more consistent income. Um, so, you know, whether that's blog writing, whether it's affiliate marketing, whatever the case is, I need to do research and I need to put efforts into this so that I can travel more freely because honestly, one of the things I hate about working on a campsite over the summer is the fact that I miss all the festivals. And I'm not, you know, a lot of the people I meet working on campsites are in their 60s, mid 60s, some even in their 70s. And, you know, they're not into festivals, they're not going to concerts, etc. Whereas I am, only, despite my appearance, only 51, 52 in November. So I very much do want to be attending festivals and, and concerts and you know all these things happen over the, the summer in the UK um, and this year again it really hit me when I'm seeing all my friends at Glastonbury and Reading Festival and Download Festival and Isle of Wight Festival and I'm sitting on a campsite and um, so I really 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 need to avoid that situation you know, I've had a few people say to me, well, why don't you go back into your career and see if you can find a remote work? And yeah, it, it, it could be an option. I just don't know if I'm employable anymore. Um, and that's maybe not a wise thing to say on a video that's going to be public. But um, like with the campsites, I just have a zero tolerance for BS these days. Um, Maybe if I was earning a better salary or daily rate or whatever, I may, I may put up with it a bit more. Um, but yeah, I definitely need to find a way to become more free, you know, ability to travel. But having said that, um, and I really need to work this properly so it doesn't come out wrong. Um, Shaka, my dog, who's, he'll be 15 in February, um, he's still hanging in there. Uh, he's actually going for blood tests soon because I am concerned about his liver and kidneys. He's not eating very well these days. Uh, he, he, historically throughout his life, you know, he can't wait for you to put that bowl down and then he's straight in there. Now, there are days where you won't eat at all. Um, there are other days where you, you won't eat breakfast, but you'll eat at 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, he seems to have the start of doggy dementia, perhaps, where sometimes he doesn't seem to recognize who I am. Um, you know, just for a few seconds, and then it kind of clicks in, and then the tail starts wagging again, and things like that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, um, I'm kind of preparing myself for that and it's not going to be easy because you know he's been in my life for as I say almost 15 years now and um, but until he does pass there's only so much traveling I can do and certainly at his you know with him getting worse there, there's no real point doing too much traveling at this stage to be honest with you because you know I can't leave him for more than three or four hours now Historically, when he was younger, he was left for eight, nine hours a day, no problem at all. But as he's gotten older, you know, like all of us, the bladder starts getting weaker, etc. So he needs more regular outings, which means I can't actually go that far and explore. Um, and at the moment, I've actually decided to go back to basics, as it were, just for a little while anyway, just to see how things go, where it's just the van and the bicycle. I've left my motor, my motorcycle in the trailer back in Norfolk just to see how I get on with that. I mean, the whole reason I bought the bike, if you can watch the other video, is just to be able to park the van on a campsite somewhere 
and then head off on the bike and, and go exploring that way. Um, but I do want to get to the point where I can wild park a bit more, you know, where, where there are free park ups left in the UK. And I'm going to be making a video about park ups in the UK and the sheer amount of park ups that we're losing as a community. Um, I mean, it, you know, it hasn't all been doom and gloom this year. There has been some positives. I did get to do some exploring in Wales earlier in the year. Um, but yeah, mostly it's 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 been a year of hustling up to now. Um, working on those two campsites in total, I think I was with the one for about two months and then the other for months and maybe three months in total of the year. Um, and the rest of the time I'm doing pet sitting. I've built three or four websites this year. Um, just a few projects for SEO work and that kind of thing. But, you know, it seems like every blinking service that I provide is in a highly competitive market. Website design, pet sitting, uh, social media management, photography. I really couldn't choose a more difficult blinking industries to be in. Um, what I have also thought of doing, and it's been something I've been thinking about doing for ages, and I really, really need to discipline myself and make time to do it. So I want to start painting. Um, I used to do a lot of sketch work when I was younger. I loved drawing and painting, uh, not painting, but sketching pencil work. Um, and I really want to see how I get on with painting. I've seen a lot of people who live a nomadic life or travel a life, they paint and they sell their, their prints, you know, anything between 100 to 200 pounds for a, not, not a massive print. Um, so I want to give it a go, you know, why not? Nothing to lose, right? And if it provides me with another source of income and allows me to travel, then great. Um, you know, I've got to try all these avenues and try all these things to just get to the point where I'm a bit more, well, I'm not tied down and especially so one shark one shark it does cross over because then I really do want to start traveling in earnest because I can you know I can totally understand from you lovely people who have taken the you know taken the time to subscribe to my channel that there's not a hell of a lot going on and um, that's because of finances and shark um, those are the two main constraints and again I really don't want that to come out the wrong way I am uh, by no means rushing or wishing for Shaka to cross over um, you know if I was that kind of person and it was about me I would have put him to sleep three years ago but it's not about me he's been in my life for almost 15 years and I'm going to be there until he's ready to leave um, but once he does I'm going to really start traveling in earnest then. And I just want to be, I want to use this time while he's still around or whilst I can't travel that much to try and get these other things in place. Um, you know, these other earning income streams and things like that. Because, yeah, whilst I might be able to go and do contract work back in the, in, you know, the information tech industry and do what, I, what I've been doing for the past 30 years, it again ties me down, you know, um, Monday to Friday work, etc., etc. Um, I could do contracts, maybe three or six month contracts, but then again, I'm tied down for three to six months. So it's, it's a fine line to walk this lifestyle. Um, if you're happy just to live this lifestyle and travel isn't a priority or an interest to you, you're probably not going to experience these frustrations whatsoever. Um, if, like me, your goal is to travel, then finding a way to make an income, unless you've got an employer who allows you to work full-time remotely, great, but then you're still tied down. You're still working 9 to 5, um, Monday to Friday. Um, or maybe you're self-employed, like me, but it is a challenge. I mean, if you are self-employed, any business owner will know who's self-employed that it's it's a it's a hard knock life. Yeah, um, 
and it takes a while to get yourself established and a while longer to be actually become profitable. Very few startups make it within the first year into a profitable state, depending on the outlay initially. Um, and it's even harder when you are traveling because you don't have that base where you can start getting the word out to people in your local area and your friends and your family, etc., recommend you and your neighbors and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's a harder sell when you're traveling because you're never in one place for very long. So like the photography services, I can't really advertise them much because I'm never in a place for long enough to actually you know, a range of photo shoots and things like that. You know, some people have said, yeah, but if you have an itinerary, then you can target those areas weeks or months before you get there. And until you live this lifestyle, you don't understand why planning anything should not be something you do. Um, I did originally, when I first undertook, you know, when I first set out on this project, I had all the plans. And within two weeks, those plans flew out the window when my blowout happened. And, I, and then a couple of weeks later, my wheel chased me down the motorway. So I learned very early on, and it's it's occurred since. You know, I made plans after that, and they failed because of one reason or another. Um, so I've just come to terms, and it's actually something I want to come to terms with a bit better, is I am a, I'm a warrior. Not as a fighter warrior, but a thinking warrior. Um, I overanalyze the shit out of everything, right? And probably the project manager in me, which, you know, served me well when you're a project manager, understanding the risks and all this kind of stuff to a project and kind of foreseeing things. But um, day to day life, it can be tiresome and constantly worrying about. Where's, when's the next income coming from and blah, 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 rather than just being able to go, I'm just going to go with the flow. Um, and as much as I love the idea of that, I just don't know that my brain's ever going to allow me to think like that. Um, if you've got any hints how to shut the brain up and just go with the flow, I'm all ears. Please do comment below and let me know how you, if you've managed to do that yourself. Um, Cause yeah, uh, if, and I really want to stop being constantly worried about things and money, especially, you know, really I, I took on this lifestyle and this project. So that money wasn't a driving factor, but as sad as it is, you can't do much without money. Um, you know, they say money can't buy you happiness, but money can put fuel in the damn tank, which can make me some memories. So, yeah. Um, anyway, that's the update. Um, don't know if I missed anything. As usual, this is not scripted. So, you know, I'm just going off the top of my head here. What else is there that I should mention has happened in this past year? Uh, that's about it because there are other things going on, but I'm going to make separate videos about that. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there, folks. Um, I'm sorry it's been a while, and I'm going. To, I'm not going to promise because I've promised before, but I I will endeavour to make more videos, even when I'm not in the best of moods, and this maybe especially when I'm not in the best of moods because. This channel was always about bringing you the realities of van life and not the stuff you see on social media. Um, because I guarantee you those 99% of those people you see on social media waking up to sunrises and all this, they're not full-timers. They go out on weekends and they go out on holidays and it's a very, very different lifestyle. So if you are contemplating full-time van life or caravan life or bus life or whatever, the boat life, and you want, you've got some questions, please feel free to, to, to get in touch with me. Um, I'm happy to share my experiences, my knowledge, what I've learned so far. Um, I've also started a Facebook group if you want to pop along. It's called Van Life Diaries UK. Um, 
it is just for the UK, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, pop in, have a chat, and hopefully I'll get, you, get to know some of you people. All right, folks, as always, until next time, be happy, be safe, and be kind. Cheers.